Hello, and welcome to Student Growth Percentiles, Insights into the Illinois State Growth Model. This presentation provides an update regarding the direction of the Illinois State Board of Education regarding the measurement of student growth under the Every Student Succeeds Act. It is being offered by ECRA Group, an approved Illinois professional learning partner, as a resource to Illinois schools, districts, and other professional learning partners to help plan for the student growth component of the Illinois Consolidated State Plan under ESSA. This presentation is based on information provided by the Accountability Technical Advisory Committee, or TAX, recommendations to ISBE. It is likely that ISBE will move away from linear regression towards student growth percentiles as a means to measure student growth under the new school improvement and accountability system. SGPs, or student growth percentiles, are the focus of this presentation. It is important to note that there are details that, as of the date of this recording, have not been approved by ISBE. Therefore, uncertainty still exists as to how ISBE will ultimately utilize SGPs to measure student growth. Please check back regularly to this post as it will be updated as new information becomes available. Why measure student growth? While most educators, researchers, and policymakers would agree that raising proficiency levels of students is the long-term goal of schools, its sole use as a school improvement and accountability metric is inadequate. To scientifically and equitably assess improvement efforts, one must focus on measuring student growth, not aggregate improvements in proficiency. Focusing school improvement and school accountability on student growth overcomes two major challenges often cited with the use of proficiency rates to judge school improvement efforts. First, measuring growth at the student level removes confounding factors attributed to different groups of students, demographic shifts, cohort effects, differential standards across grade levels, etc. that create variation in proficiency rates unrelated to school performance. And second, many school improvement efforts target students that are well below or well above the proficiency standard, making it likely that proficiency rates will remain unchanged despite significant improvements. For these reasons, the distinction between growth and proficiency is gaining national attention from policymakers and shifting best practices. Researchers and policymakers now recognize that student growth is a more equitable approach to assessing improvement efforts. As a result, student growth has become a significant factor in school improvement and accountability system in Illinois. Under the new ISBE accountability framework, student growth will contribute 50% to a school's quality rating. This is a radical shift from prior policies and will require schools to be more sophisticated in how they monitor individual student progress. Initially, Illinois will measure student growth in grades 4 through 8. Graduation rates will take the place of student growth at the high school level. However, student growth will likely expand to the high school level in future years. The process for measuring student growth via student growth percentile starts with administering assessments. Initially, growth will be measured using PARC scores in grades 3 through 8, but will evolve as ISBE adopts a new assessment system. In the future, growth will likely be expanded to the high school level using the SAT suite of assessments. Once student level assessment scores are produced, the process for measuring student growth is focused on connecting individual student assessment scores over time at the individual student level to quantify the growth that has occurred. This is where student growth percentiles comes in. Let's take a deeper look. Recommendations from the TAC to ISBE on April 18, 2018 state, for technical and practical reasons, the TAC recommends using mean student growth percentiles as the basis for computing academic progress for grades 3 through 8 in the Illinois accountability system. While many details were left out of the document, based on comments from the TAC during their April 30, 2018 meeting, one can glean insight into the direction ISBE may be headed. One side note, however, is while the document indicates growth will be measured in grades 3 8, it will most likely be measured in grades 4 8 as grade 3 will be needed as the baseline to measure growth in grade 4. What is a student growth percentile, or SGP, under the current TAC recommendations? An SGP is the percentage of students across Illinois that an individual student scored equal to or better for the current testing year when compared to only students that received the same score the previous year. This comparison is done separately for each grade level and subject. Under an SGP model, growth is defined as conditional proficiency. It's conditional in that it looks at the relative performance of an individual student against all students with the same baseline score. This is different from proficiency percentiles, which ignore previous performance of a particular student. Student growth percentiles start by plotting a student's score this year, which in this example is grade 6 Park Math Score 2017, that's the y-axis, versus his or her last year's score, which in this example is grade 5 Park Math Score 2016, for the same student. We can plot a second student to the same graph, and a third student. Ultimately, we can continue to plot all students across the state. Remember, the students plotted are only students that have the current year's park scores and last year's park scores. A student that is missing a score would not be included in the analysis. Once all students across the state are plotted, 
Cubic B-spline quantile regression is used to establish growth percentiles for a student by comparing a student's current year score to all students with the same score the previous year. With this approach, each student's PARC score for the current year is compared to all other students across the state who had the same previous year's PARC score. SGP models are computed separately for each grade level and subject. Graphically, this amounts to isolating a vertical slice of the data. For example, a student with prior year score of 750 would be compared to all other students across the state who also scored a 750 last year. The quantile regression for the 50th growth percentile is depicted by the black dotted line, the 84th SGP in blue and the 16th SGP in red. An SGP of 50 indicates a student scored equal to or better than 50% of students that had the same score the previous year. Growth percentiles capture the percent of students that a student scored equal to or better when compared to students with the same starting score. By isolating students who scored a 750 last year, one can reference the quantile regression curves to estimate the growth percentile. If a student's current test score lands on the 50th quantile, that student receives an SGP of 50. Similarly, if a student lands on the 84th quantile, they receive an SGP of 84. And if they land on the 16th quantile, they receive an SGP of 16. This extends to all percentiles such as the 99th SGP and the 1st SGP. The student growth percentile model recommended by the Technical Advisory Committee establishes a normative definition for student growth. While it is possible to use an SGP model to compare each student in Illinois to a fixed standard for growth, the information currently available suggests ISBE's implementation of SGPs will likely create a new normative reference each year. An effect of rebuilding growth curves each year is that the SGP model will inherently have a competitive property in which the model will mathematically limit the percentage of students that can receive favorable growth percentiles. Once each student receives a growth percentile as previously described, a methodology to summarize growth for groups of students must be established. The Technical Advisory Committee is recommending that the mean or simple average of student growth percentiles be used to summarize student growth for groups of students and ultimately the school and district. Developing a growth score for a group of students starts at the individual student level. Based on the methodology described, each student will receive a student growth percentile or SGP. Again, the SGP is the percentage of students across the state at the same grade level that the student performed equal to or better when compared to all students with an equivalent prior year score. Once all students in a school receive an SGP, we simply average the SGPs to arrive at the mean SGP for use in the accountability system. Given the normative nature of the student growth percentiles, SGPs are comparable across all subjects and grade levels, allowing for a single growth summary to be produced for a building or group of students. Once the mean SGP is calculated, it will be compared to accountability thresholds to link into the accountability system and award letter grades. Each school will receive a mean SGP, which corresponds to the average of student level growth percentiles for all applicable students and tests within a school. The mean SGP will then be compared to thresholds to assign accountability system points for the growth component on a scale from 1 to 100. If a school's mean SGP is greater than 80, the school will receive 100 points. If a school's mean SGP is less than 20, the school will receive 0 points. If a school's mean SGP is between 20 and 80, the school will receive points based on the distance of the mean SGP between 20 and 80, using a percentage metric. For example, a school with mean SGP of 50 will be awarded 50 accountability system points, because 50 minus 20, which is 30, divided by 60 equals 0.5, and consequently will be awarded 50 points. In addition to using the mean SGP to assign accountability system points, the mean SGP will also be used to award letter grades for growth. It is important to note that letter grades will be for reporting purposes only and will not influence school accountability determinations. It is also likely that the reporting of letter grades will be delayed a year. The information available at the time of this recording suggests that schools will receive two letter grades. The first letter grade will be awarded by rank ordering the mean SGP of all schools across the state and results put into five groups, each capturing 20% of schools. Respectively, each of the five groups of schools will receive a letter grade of A through F. A second letter grade will be awarded by rank ordering the mean SGP of like schools across the state, and results put into five groups within the set of like schools, and grades will be awarded respectively. At the time of this recording, the metric used to create like schools has not been published. That said, 
Comments from the TAC suggest that the percentage of adequacy target from the evidence-based funding model is being considered. Specifically, four sets of like schools based on state quartiles of the percentage of adequacy target may be used. Thank you for listening. Should you have any questions related to student growth or how ECRA Group can assist your school district in using student growth at the local level to drive evidence-based practice, please email il-empower at ecragroup.com or message me at at JL Gata on Twitter. Please check back regularly to this post as it will be updated as new information is published. Also, if you would like your school or district's data run through ECRA's student growth engine, please contact us for details. Thank you.